All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section here. We get a uh, part B of this section is all about slant asymptotes. So we've done vertical asymptotes. You can kind of see on this rational function over here, we got some vertical asymptotes. And we know by now we can factor the bottom of that little uh, rational function over there and we can find these vertical asymptotes. But every now and then we get a slant asymptote. Check out this blue line here. This is the slant asymptote of the function. It's gonna follow that forever and ever and ever. So when does this happen? This happens when the degree of the numerator is one higher than the degree of the denominator. So we're looking for the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom. And check it out, see how three is one bigger than two. So we're gonna get this whole idea of a slant asymptote. So really, we're gonna want to write the equation of that. So this is kinda gonna show us the end behavior here, what's happening to infinity. I know it starts at one, and what's the slope of this bad boy? If you could just kinda count, I, have, I think I have this on your shell notes. Up one over one, up one over one. So it looks like it's just x plus one. Started at one, had a slope at one. That's our goal is to write the equation of these slant asymptotes. Let's do it, here we go. So that's our goal. Uh, example two, I'm gonna do it two different ways. So I'm gonna show you the long way and the short way. So long way we need sometimes. Sometimes the shortcut isn't gonna really help us out. So let's make sure we're cool with the long way. So let's go back to old school division. Long division, baby. Here we go. So we're gonna take the numerator, x squared minus x plus two, and we're gonna divide it by the denominator. So we're gonna divide that by x minus three. And then again, don't freak out. All you have to do is make the leading terms the same. That's it. So it looks intense here, but I wanna turn x into x squared. So how do I do it? I'm just gonna to have to times it by x. So x times x is x squared. That's coolio. Then negative three times x is negative three x. Now this is where it gets tricky. You're gonna take this and you're gonna subtract that whole quantity. So why do we do that? Well, it cancels out when I subtract that quantity. My x squareds cancel, but I'm left with negative x minus a negative three. So be real careful with your signs here. A negative negative is a positive. So this is really positive two x right here. So some people like to change it. Some people like to change their signs, something like this. I'm totally down with that. However, you keep it straight because that really gets tricky in there. Uh, bring down the next term, which is two. And then can I turn x into two x? Sure, I'm just gonna times everybody by two. So times it by two. So when I do that, it looks like I've got two x. Negative three times two is six. And now the same thing, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract that quantity. And then what happens, these bad boys cancel. And I'm left with two minus a negative six. That's gonna be eight. So if you wanna do the whole change signs, that's totally cool with me. And this bad boy here is your remainder. Remember that whole idea of a remainder? You have a remainder of eight. So I could, I, that's great. I don't even care about the remainder. All I care about is this first part here. The first part, and I'm gonna highlight that, is the equation of the line. That's gonna be the equation of the slant asymptote there. Um, the remainder, I'm not too concerned about. I was trying to find the slant asymptote, so this is going to be x plus two is the slant asymptote. Excellent, could we have done that with synthetic division? Hopefully you've seen this before, maybe in algebra two. If not, you can go back to our algebra two stuff and watch this video, it's more in depth about division. But the shortcut is, if that's the factor, the solution is three. So I'm gonna divide by three. Basically, we're gonna do the same thing, but without a variable. So I'm gonna take the coefficient. So I've got one x squared, so I'm gonna put a one here. I've got negative one x, so I'm gonna put negative one here, and then I've got two here. Awesome, and then what do we do? We bring the first term down right off the bat, so that's just one. We're gonna multiply this way, so three times one is three, and then we always add vertically here. So negative one plus three is two, three times two is six, add vertically two plus six is eight, this last one is the remainder right here. And so back in the day when we divide it, we could say, oh yeah, it drops a power. It turns into, it was x squared, it turns into x, and he's our constant. Plus we have this remainder of eight over whatever we were dividing by. We were dividing by x minus three. So that's really the answer, which is great. That would be if you did the division, long division or synthetic division. We see how we get the same answer. But again, if I'm looking for the equation of the slant asymptote, I'm looking for this. If I'm looking for what happens, the divisor, I'm looking for this one right here. But again, that first part is the same, slant asymptote. I love it, here we go. All right, let's find some more slant asymptotes here. So take a look at example three. I know there's gonna be a slant asymptote because the degree on top is one higher than the degree on bottom. Uh, then I gotta decide if I'm gonna do long division or synthetic. Long division always works. I'm just gonna say that. If you just want a one method, do long division. 
but I'm going to show you synthetic because you could do it. Anytime you can kind of look at it and say, oh, I know what the solution is. I know what makes this equal zero. Uh, I'm kind of solving that. What would this be? Well, I'm going to just show you because it's going to be important here. Maybe you can do some mental math there and hook it up. But if I solve this equation, 2x equals negative 3, divide by 2, what do you get here? You get negative 1 and a half or negative 3 halves. So I can go ahead and do synthetic division. Like I could say, Coolio, here, let me put in negative 3 halves. Let me go ahead and just write it as a decimal if that's cool. Negative 1 and a half from this. The problem is with this, because I divided by 2, I changed the problem. So if you divide the bottom by 2, you got to divide the top by 2. Now, it didn't really matter last time because it was just x, e, x plus 1. So anytime it's just like x plus 2, x minus 3, and you're, you're just looking at it and saying, oh, I know what the solution is, you're not doing anything because you're dividing by 1. But because you actually have this leading coefficient here, it messes things up. But it still works if you just think about, okay, I just changed the problem a little bit, 4x squared actually becomes 2. So you got to divide this by 2. You got to divide the 2 by 2, so that's 1. And then the negative 7 becomes negative 3.5. So you can still do it. If this is too much sand for your truck, that's cool. Just do the long division, no worries. And then the rules are the same. Bring down your 2, times it by negative 1 and a half. That'll give you negative 3. And 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. Go ahead and say negative 1 and a half times that is going to be, what, a positive 3? And then when I subtract these, or add these, you get a negative 0.5. So what does that mean? So that means my uh, slant asymptote, that's what we were looking for, is what? We are looking for the first part here, this part right here. And that's going to be y equals 2x minus 2. So we're only finding the slant asymptote. I don't care about the remainder. Just a note, though, if you did want the remainder, what do you have to do? You have to be careful because we divided by 2. To bring him back, your remainder would actually be what? You'd actually have to take your negative 0.5, negative 0.5, and you'd actually have to times it by 2. And you'd have to say your remainder is then what? The remainder would equal negative 1. So if you need the remainder for any reason, you got to bring him back. So up to you. Synthetic division, long division, your choice. Excellent. Let's double check this, make sure everything's cool on this. So I went ahead and preloaded the numerator, um, the whole function in there. 4x squared plus 2x minus 7, divide by that. I didn't know what our answer was going to be, so let's plug in our answer. So this is saying our slant asymptote is at 2x minus 2. So let's graph it and see if that indeed happened. Ooh, it went really fast there. So in blue, maybe we can slow this down here. So in blue was the original function, so there it is right there. And then you can see the slant asymptote, and let's see if it in red, I'm going to go ahead and graph it now this time in red, if it's going to draw that bad boy in there, and it does really quickly. You can see, yes, we are good to go on that. Awesome. Excellent. So we can kind of do synthetic. How about this? Can I look at this quickly? Oh, no, I got to factor it. I get two answers. It doesn't really help us out here when I can get two answers. So unfortunately here, I'm going to have to go old school, bust out the long division. So... I'm going to say it's 6x cubed plus 13x squared. Now be super careful here. You can't just skip a variable. See how it goes? x cubed, x squared. Where'd the x go? There's no x, so you got to put in zero x's here. So we need the placeholder. Same thing is true with synthetic. If you came back to synthetic and it skipped a variable, you got to put it in the zero as a placeholder, or else it gets all wonky. Won't get the right answer. There we go. Now I'm going to divide that by 2x squared plus 3x, and again, it looks intense, but it's okay. Can I turn 2x squared into 6x cubed? Sure. 2 turns into 6 if I multiply by 3, and then x squared will turn into x cubed if I times it by x. And usually we don't make these crazy, I mean, you can make some crazy division problems, but usually they work out pretty chill for us. So uh, 2x squared times 3x will give me that 6x cubed. That was my whole goal, was to make them the same. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. And again, I'm going to subtract that whole quantity, just like I would in regular little long division. And what's going to happen here? Well, the first terms are going to cancel. So my 6x cubes are gone. 13x squared minus 9x squared is going to be 4x squared. So be careful with your signs. You can bring down the next term, which is a 0x. Just a little placeholder there. And now repeat the process. So can I turn 2x squared into 4x squared? Yeah, I can. I'm just going to say, uh, what? 2. 2x squared times 2 will be, uh, let me change colors here, 
4x squared. But you got to multiply everybody by 2. So it'll be 3x times 2 is 6x. And then really, I'm going to subtract that whole quantity. The whole goal here is what? These lead terms cancel. Gone. And now I'm going to say 0 minus 6x is negative 6x. Bring down the next term, which is minus 5. And can I turn 2x squared into this? Not without dividing by x. So that's where we're done. We are done here. This power is bigger than this power, so I'm done. And really, I'm done with the problem. This is the part that I'm interested in. But if I want to finish, what's your remainder? Your remainder actually is 6x minus 5. So I believe in the practice. I've got a couple like, hey, just practice long division. So if you were practicing long division, this answer would be 3x plus 2. Then you've got this remainder of negative 6x minus 5 over what you were dividing by, which in this case was 2x squared plus 3x. So you may have to write a couple like that. That's just straight long division. But the instructions here say, what's the slant asymptote? So I don't care about the remainder. The remainder doesn't interest me. In this case, all I care about is the first chunk of the line, which is the equation of the slant asymptote. So this slant asymptote is 3x plus 2. So just be careful. Make sure you know what you're looking for. Slant, as slant asymptote is a little bit shorter. Fantastic. So we got a slant asymptote of 3x plus 2. I'm going to write it up here. This is the same example from last time. It has a slant asymptote of 3x plus 2. Can I take that and determine in behavior? Ah, slant asymptote. Sure. So really, if I know that, I don't know what the graph looks like. I mean, you can graph it if you want. But ideally, if I have a 3x plus 2, I know it crosses here. I know it's doing something like this. This is a rough picture right here. Very rough. But there's the slant asymptote. So it's going to be following it somehow. Maybe the top or the bottom. I don't know. I could do more work if I really cared. But ideally, it's going to kind of follow this forever and ever. It's going to kind of follow this forever and ever. So could you give me the in behavior? Yes, I could. So I could say, hey, as x goes to infinity, or let's go left to in behavior of the g of x, the function. And then if I'm doing in behavior, do the same thing to the right. The limit as x goes to positive infinity of this function. And we can actually figure out what's happening here. So as I go to the right, I know it's going up, so this has to go to positive infinity. And as I go left, it goes down, it goes to negative infinity. So that's another way to check. You could also go ahead and plug in, do our limits to infinity, and try to plug them in algebraically and do that method as well. But I just want to say, hey, if you know slant asymptote, maybe they'll speed things up for you, and you should be good to go. Excellent. So really practice these, especially that long division. They get a little tricky. Uh, make sure you're good on that practice. Good luck on the mastery check. Peace out.